Hi guys, today we are working with the lower bound function in C++. It comes from the SCD namespace, evidently, and it's inside the algorithm header. So whenever you use that function, make sure you include algorithm in, um, in the header of your file. The way it works is you can pass it a range. So let's say you have a vector like this, it has to be sorted. You can pass the lower bound function here you can pass it a range like this one, v that begin, which is an iterator to the beginning of the vector. And then you can also pass it the end, which is an iterator pointing past the end of the vector. As a third argument, you can pass it a value and the lower bounds function will return you an iterator that points to the first element in the range, which is not less than that value you've provided. So this is the example I was giving you. So inside of the vector, what's the, the index of the first element that is not less than uh, 50? Of course, because it returns you an iterator, you can dereference it in your program before using it. But let me switch back to my hacker rank challenge right now. And the way it works is we are going to receive some numbers. So first we receive an integer, which corresponds to the, uh, the numbers that are going to be inside our container. So here we have eight values. That's why you see the number eight here. And these numbers are already sorted. So one, two, six, nine, 15. There are duplicates, but it's fine. And then after that, we are going to receive a couple of queries. So in this case, four queries. And for every query, we have to tell at which index the integer is present. And if it is not present, then we have to tell at which index, or we have to specify the index at which the smallest integer that is just greater than the number given is present. So I believe this will be even more um, obvious to you, but let's check the outputs right here, the sample output. So in this case, we have one, one, two, two, six, nine, nine, 15. Then we have four queries. So number one, the position inside the um, that list, we are going to store it in a vector, but for now, let's just call it a list. The position, the first element that is not less than one is actually one, right? Because it's equal. Lower bounds will return you equal um, values as well. So the index of equal values, but not less than. It can be equal or greater than, but not less than. So in this case, one is, is valid. One thing that I need to specify for this challenge is that it's not exactly the indices that we are dealing with. It's more like the position. So it's not zero based. It starts at one, which can be kind of confusing. And I think they specify that here for each query, you have to print yes without the codes if the number is present and at which index and uh, between parentheses, they write one based. So what you see here, these positions, one, five, six, eight are not zero based. They are one base. That's why in this case, one is the first element that is not uh, less than uh, one here. So we, we return the position number one. Then uh, the second um, the second integer here is four. So what's the, the position, the one based uh, position of the first element that is not less than four? In this case, one, two, three, four, five. Number six is not less than four. It's actually greater. So we return here um, position five. But we say a no because the uh, the number four is not present in that list. We, we've received something that is greater than four. So we return that uh, position number five. But we say no because number four is not in the list. Here we said yes because number one is in the list. All right, so I think now you can you can picture how we're going to do this. I've already written my code, so I'm not going to waste more time explaining or whatever. I'm going to paste it uh, bit by bit and explain to you exactly what it does. All right, so I'm going to come here. The first thing here, uh, you can see that I'm working with long data type, just in case we, we are going to receive values um, that are a bit large to, you know, handle with normal integers. Then we are going to see in number n. Number n is going to be the number of, um, of items or of values that we're going to store in our container. And for the container here, we have a vector. So it's a vector of long as well. And I can use vector again because I have this 
include vector at the top of my file here. Now that we have the number of elements that we want to work with, we can simply loop through, right? So from zero all the way to less than n, which means we're going to loop eight times in this case. We want to see in the value. So we're going to see in one at the first iteration, then second iteration, we're going to see in one again. Then after that, two, after that, two, and so on. And every time we get a value for our temp variable here, which is actually declared here, but it's being used here. Then we're going to add that value to our vector using the pushback method right here. By the end of this for loop, our vector that I'm calling V is going to have all these eight values. Next up, we are going to see in the, um, the number of queries, the, the value four in this case, because we are going to deal with four queries here. So we can proceed with our program. And this is the important part right here. So we have this for loop that looks slightly complex, but it's not. It's just because of these C out statements. But basically, we are going to loop through the four uh, query cases here. And at every iteration, we are going to see in the number that we have to find in our list or uh, the number for which uh, we need to find the uh, index of the value that is greater than that number. So C in query. So at first iteration, it's going to be one, then it's going to be four, then it's going to be nine, and finally 15. Then after that, I get an iterator for our vector, which is the vector of a long, don't forget that. And I'm calling it ITR. And um, because the lower bounds method here, if I go back, it returns an iterator pointing to the first element in the range. If I want to use the lower bounds uh, function here, I need to make sure that I'm storing whatever it returns in an iterator like this. So lower bounds, v dot begin, which is the beginning of the vector, v dot end, all the way to the end, that's our range, and query. So like I said, query will be one and then four and then nine and 15. So query here is the value, like in my example here, 50. In this case, query is the value. So that's what I'm passing as the third argument to the lower bounds function. So now we want to make sure, uh, we want to check, did we find that value in our vector? So we can dereference our iterator here. And if it does not match our query, it means we did not find that number. So we can say no. And then to get the, uh, the index, or the position, we can say itr minus v dot begin. But because here in this challenge, the index is supposed to be one based, that's why I'm adding plus one. If it were to be zero based, then I would remove that. But in this case, if you want to pass this challenge, you have to add plus one. The next condition is if we were able to find that uh, value in our vector, then we want to say yes, we get the value again. Same thing, itr minus v dot begin plus one. And that's pretty much it. That's the whole program. So let's try and run these codes. It's going to cancel out whatever I did previously, but it's fine because I've already passed that challenge. So we pass the challenge. You can see here we have the same outputs as they do. And now let's submit it to make sure we pass all the various test cases. And I think we should if I have not, um, if I did not mess up anything. It's taking a while. But yeah, we were able to complete all the test cases successfully. So that's pretty much it for this video. Make sure you, you try out the lower bound function in C++. There are other ones that are pretty interesting, like the upper bounds, which is uh, stricter than lower bound because it does not include values that are equal to, but I will leave that to you. In the meantime, please make sure you subscribe to this channel, turn on your notifications, drop whatever comments you have, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.